We all deny that he's God. Because Allah says, Jo ki Allah ke saath kisi ko sharik karega, fakad harram Allah liya jannah, Allah will make jannah haram for them. He's the Messiah, he's the Messiah, he's the Messihullah, he's the Rasulullah, he's Kalamullah. But he's not, he's not, he's not. He's not. And the Bible says that Adam and Eve, they heard Suna of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, in the late afternoon. So they hide themselves in the bushes. Now this is what the Holy Bible says. They hid themselves in the bushes. So God Almighty comes and stands where Adam and Eve were a few seconds before. And he's scanning, looking around. He can't see them. He can't find them. No, no, that's what the Bible says. No, no, you must know. This is what the Bible says. So now he can't find them. So he says, Adam, Adam, where are thou? Kaha hai? Maybe he didn't know. Or maybe he's playing hide and seek. Maybe God also wants to have a little fun. You know, so he says, <laughs> Beta to kaha hai? So he peeped through the bushes. Bushes, and said, you know, very, very frightened, you know. He said, why do you behave like that? He said, no, I was naked. So who told you you were naked? You have been eating that fruit. She so said, you know, the woman that that gave us to me, she made me to eat. If it wasn't for this woman you gave me, you gave me that woman. If you didn't give me the woman, I wouldn't be in trouble. He curses them, lanat. So you man, from now on, you must sweat for your bread. We are all sweating, you know why? Because what Adam and Islam did. Otherwise, we'd all be in the Jannah. Jo kuch hona hai, marzi ke mutabik, you know, milta hota. We are all sweating, sweating. Somebody is sweating more than others, but we all sweat for our bread. Why? Because of what Adam and Eve did. A new woman, he says, you must bear children in pain and suffering. I'm asking, this Christian theology, I say, is that not enough? This man and this woman made a mistake. You kick him out of the garden. Is that not enough? No, says the Christian theology. It's not enough. That's not enough. Now he must curse them. But he curses the man and the woman and his children. Forever now we got to sweat. And the woman, forever she must bear children in pain and suffering. Is that not enough? Me? Hmm? Not yet. He said, each and every creature on earth must go to hell. Jahannam me jayega. Kyu? Because of the original sin. What Adam and Eve did, now we, that sin has in, we inherited it. Hamare vaase me aaya hai. Each and every one has got that contamination, says the Christian. And you can't remove it by individual effort. No matter how many times you pray, how you fast whole year, it, does, it, it won't help you. That stain is on your root. And the only way you can remove it is, you believe that Christ died for your sins. They, he blames you for something that you didn't do. And he blesses you for what somebody else did, if at all. You know? So, and they're getting converts. Amazing situation. So come talk to me. Come talk to me. I'm talking to the Christian. I said, look, man, you. Did Adam ask you before eating the apple? He said, no. I said, your wife. Did Eve ask her before eating the apple? He says, no. Then I said, how can God hold you responsible? If I hold you for something responsible, for something what your grandfather did, hmm, and I take revenge, I kill you for what your great-grandfather did to my great-grandfather. I put a knife to you. They catch me. I say, yeah, I killed him. So why? They say, his great-grandfather killed my great-grandfather. You know they won't hang me. They can't hang me. They say, this guy's mad. He needs a psychiatrist. No, he's got a here. They look, how can you hold this man responsible? He's a man. He's a loony. He's a lunatic. This man is a lunatic. I'm asking, is God a loony? Astaghfirullah. Yeah? He's going to hold me responsible for what Adam did and what Eve did. But you see, they're talking, talking, they're selling. And there's a saying that a fool is born every minute. A fool is born every minute. If you want to sell, you keep on talking, talking, you can sell anything. Hamare beer bohat mithe. Hamare beer bohat mithe. Now man kitna khatta hota hai, there will be some fool going and buy it. This is man. We have a saying, bole tena borwe chai. Whoever speaks, he sells his beer. No mind how sour they are. But the guy's selling, selling, and he's getting converts. But, Major eats ground. 
major heat round, a Britisher. He wrote a book called The Life of a Bengal Lancer in India. Life of a Bengal Lancer, in which he says, he says, no heathen tribe has ever conceived so grotesque an idea, involving as it does the assumption that man was born with a hereditary stain upon him, and that this stain for which he was not personally responsible was to be atoned for, and that the creator of all things had to sacrifice his only begotten son to neutralize this mysterious curse. He says, no heathen tribe has ever conceived such a filthy, dirty, ugly, nonsensical idea. But, white man, the westerner, who lands on the moon, he's got the world in the palm of his hand, he can tell you what's going on. He warned the Pakistanis about the Bay of Bengal tragedy. So look, there's a tidal wave coming. But the East Pakistan, our brethren there, they took it too lightly and hundreds of thousands more people died. They warned the Jews. In 1973, he says the Arabs are on the move. They are like gods watching what's going on with their electronic devices, with their satellites. Now that guy can't be wrong, can he be? No. We suffer from inferiority complexes. The white bars, Gora Sahib, could wrong for Sakta. In my country, the African, he's worshipping the white man. The colored is worshipping the white man. The Indian is worshipping the white man. He's like a god. He ruled us for a handful of them, four million are ruling 25 million people. And we can do nothing about it. A handful of British has ruled this subcontinent, millions of people, and you couldn't do anything about it. So, how you feel? Oh, Bara Sahab, Takka Sahib, Gora Sahib. So whatever he says, you can't be wrong. You can challenge him. Now, we say sin is not inherited. Sin is an acquisition. After reaching a certain stage, the individual, boy or girl, he becomes responsible or she becomes responsible for his or her action. Allah says, And no bearer of a burden bears the burden of another. Everyone that is born is masoom, is sinless. Whether in the home of a Hindu, a Christian, or a Jew, or an atheist, or an agnostic, the child is innocent. And if that child dies before the age of discussion, that child goes to heaven. That is our belief. Number two, the dignity of Christ. They say that Jesus is God. He is God Almighty in human form. Allah came down to earth as a man. He was born to Mary, the mother of Jesus, in the stable some 2,000 years ago. God came down. He stayed in his mother's womb for nine months, Maryam, alayhi salam. And the Bible says, in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 2, verse 21, when he was eight days old, he was circumcised. When he was eight days old, he was circumcised. And named Jesus by the angel when he was in his mother's womb. The market pet met her, the first thing he said, his name is Isaratna. So, we are asking, who was in his mother's womb? He said, Jesus. Who is Jesus? He said, he's God and the Son of God. So he was in his mother's womb. He said, yes. So how did he come out from there? So like you and me. He said, no, 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 Suppose you were a nurse 2,000 years ago in the stable and you were helping Mary to deliver the child. Can you for one moment think that that helpless little creature is your God, your Jehovah, your Allah? No, the mind says no. When you see the helpless little creature, any human child, you see, you can strangle the child. You know, you can do what you like with the child. That child, as he's growing, he's drinking milk from his mother's breast. He is wetting his napkins. Any child, whether it is a Moses or a Jesus or a Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessing be upon them all. You drink milk, you wet your napkins. You eat food, you must excrete. You have a call of nature. Whether the toilet or the bush or the rocks, you have to run behind it. This is human. And Allah tells in the Quran, this quality, this quality, that anyone who eats food can never be your God. Anyone. Mal Masihu ibn Maryama illa Rasul. More directly to Jesus. Because they say he's God. And there are people, the Roman Catholic, they worship his mother Mary. As the mother of God. So, Mal Masihu no Maryama illa Rasul. So, most certainly, Masih, the son of Mary, is no more than a messenger. Many were the messengers that passed away before him. 
wa ummuhu siddiqa and his mother was a virtuous woman a good woman a holy woman a pious woman wa ummuhu siddiqa kana yaqulani tam and they both had food and they both had food so so what we all eat food so no no they both had food and the people said that that god they worship jesus as god they worship maryam alayhi salam as the mother of god so yes is the boat at food unzur kaifa nubayyinu lahum alayati so see how we make our signs clear to you kaisa hum samjhate hain kaisa aasani se samjhate hain unzur dekho how we make things plain to you allah says so manzur anna yufkun so have another look dobara dekho how they have drifted away from the path dobara dekho kya dekho they are both at food this is so what no no allah is drawing your attention to something more serious than that you see it's unzur sun manzur dekho dobara dekho he won't tell you the way i'm going to tell you where i tell you the way we speak ke par khana khate the sandas ki hazrat hoti thi No, no, Allah Bari Taala is sublime, is holy. He doesn't talk like that. But we have to. When you are talking to the man, he says, "Look, they had food." He says, "Yes." Then they had a call of nature. They had to run to the toilet. And if there's no toilet, they run behind the bush. No. He's got to say yes. Say, Look, how can God run behind the bush looking for toilets, man? Huh? There are some jokes, which are. No, no, Allah is giving us. Wallah he is giving it to you but we don't use it because we don't know that it's there he is giving you all the arguments kaisa baat karna uske sath he is telling you he is teaching you in the quran this book is giving you everything you don't need my cleverness your cleverness the molly's cleverness you don't need that this book is answering all your problems this is jesus is god because allah is his father why he said you see he had no father i said yes He was born miraculously. Mojiza, Allah ka mojiza. Allah karne chata hai. Wa iza kada amran, fa inna ma yakulu lahu kun fa yakun. Jo kuch pada karne chata hai, just is kun ho ja aur ho jata hai. That's just that's what we believe. For him to create just like that. So no, everybody must have a father. You got a father. You got a father. Everybody got father. Then what about Jesus? He must also have a father. So if you can't show a father, that his father is God. So Allah tells us So inna masala Isa inda Allah kama sali Adam the similitude of the example of Jesus in the sight of Allah is like that of Adam khalaqahu min turabin he made him from dust thumma qala lahu kun fayakun then he said be and he was So if Jesus is God and the son of God because he's got no father then Adam is a greater god because he had no father and no mother No no this is all Quran it's a stand to reason man stand to reason If a man has got no father then his father is god then he's got no father and no mother then father and mother is god he is greater He said no 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 he was made from dust and Jesus was born I said, look, man. You see, Allah says, Allah says, a system. The best system you can use is kul hatu burhana. You remember? I read just now. When they say that you Muslims are going to go to Jahannam and they're going to go to Jannah, Allah says, dil ka mani yuhum. This is very shrewd thinking. Bakwas e bakwas, mat darna. Kul keh do unko hatu burhana. Produce your proof. In kul tum saade kine. So they produce the proof. The Bible. in 2000 different languages what language you like to read any language urdu they got it gujarati they got it sindhi they got it what language you want to read gurmukhi they got it come on come on 2000 different languages so my bible says this my bible says that my bible says this my bible says that allah says ask for proof burhan and they produce it what are you going to do solve it no when allah commands us to demand proof it presupposes that when proof is produced you'll be able to analyze it otherwise it makes no sense analyze it 
So we analyze the book, have a look at it. We must have a look at it to know what he's talking about. This is a book of authority. As soon as the Quran says this, <laughs> he said, where did you get the Quran? He said, well, Allah revealed it to the Holy Prophet Muhammad. He said, look, Muhammad, <laughs> you know, there's so many wives. <laughs> a man like that, a man of God, you know, he spread his religion at the point of the sword. He was threatening people, if you don't accept Islam, chop off your head. He said, you know, he copied his book, the Quran, from the Jews and the Christians. So they start attacking the Prophet Wasallam. they start attacking the Quran, they start attacking Islam. I said, brothers and sisters, the Quran is too holy for bringing it into the battlefield. Leave it there on the shelf. Not in the battle. But don't leave it there for good. You have to bring it down and know what it is. But in the battle, you put the Quran there. I said, now where is your authority? He said, this is my authority. Qul hatu burhanakum. So he produces burhan, his proof. So I said, let's have a look. I said, look, in the book called Hebrews, this Bible has got 66 books. What do you might say, surahs? They've got books. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Philippians, Galatians, Corinthians, Hebrews, Peter, James. Books, books, books. These are names I'm just giving from the book, this encyclopedia. So there is a book inside called the book of Hebrews, chapter 7. It says, Melchizedek. It speaks about a man called Melchizedek. Melchizedek in Hebrew. Melchizedek, the high priest of Salem. So, Bara Alim Tam or Molvi. The high priest, Bara Imam of Salem. Salam. Salam Kurta Jagahogi Kush. Wahaki, Bari Mok. Was a great man, learned man. The high priest of Salem. Without father, without mother, without beginning, without end. This is what his book says. The Christian book, every Bible in the world says that. Melchizedek, the high priest of Salem, Abraham, Ibrahim alayhi salam, gave him tithes, one tenth of his zakat he was giving him, one tenth of all zakat. Ten percent of everything Ibrahim alayhi salam had he was giving to this man as a priest. He was going to collect all the zakat in the time of Ibrahim alayhi salam. He was a man. This man had no father, no mother, no beginning, no end. So I said, look, Jesus had a mother. This man had no mother and no father. Who is greater? Jesus had a beginning in the stable and an apparent end. So he had an end, an apparent end. He had a beginning in the stable and he had an end on the cross, according to you. This man had no beginning and no end. Who is greater? Come on, this is your book, man. Your book says this man, no father, no mother, no beginning, no end. He is like God. Only Allah is like that. This man is like Allah. Why don't you worship him in your book? We haven't got him in the Quran. But you got him in your book. Worship him. Why not? No, you see, man, man, he believes what he wants to believe. You see, a sickness gets hold of anybody. Now, man, what evidence is brought? Hazrat Isa alayhi salam performed miracles after miracles. Mojiza, the greatest miracle worker among the prophets was Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. He healed the lepers and the blind and the deaf and he gave life to the dead by Allah's leave, bismillah. And yet nobody really believed him. You know that? Nobody. He goes and selects 12 people, his disciples, his hawariyun, his sahaba, his 12. And when he was in difficulties, 100% desertion, not one. One of them, Judah, sold him for 30 miserable pieces of silver. Sold his God for 30 pieces of silver. And the other guy, Peter, he cursed, abused, and swore in Gali I don't even know the fellow. Who? His own God. He said, I don't even know him. And all the others left him in the lurch when he was most in need. So, Hazrat Isa said, what makes him God? Ask the Christian. Look, the child was born in the stable. He grew up like any other human child. When he went to school with the other children, did they think they were schooling with a God? Did they? No, no, no. You know, this is at the trial. They said they beat him up. And one Roman soldier punched him in the stomach. Professor, who hit you? Kaho, mera naam kya hai? What's my name? 
Well, he was on the cross according to the Bible. They launched him on the side with a spear. I said, did the, the guy who punched him in the stomach, did he think he was punching his God? Oh, when he was born, on the eighth day he was circumcised, Khatnaki, on the eighth day. So the Baba, you know, in the East, our countries, I don't know now, but when I was young, it was the Baba's prerogative. Hamare waha, hajam aate se, bachchon ki khatna karte te. Today we go to the doctor, the surgeon, but in, in South Africa, but in the old days, it was the Baba's privilege. So, some Baba came to the stable, caught little Jesus, loosened the skin, put a bamboo splint, like in the good old days, and chopped up the skin. Who? His God. <laughs> no, no, did he think he was holding his God? Huh? What has happened to you? No, no, this is the nature of man. Thomas Carlyle, in his lectures, 1840, Heroes and Hero Worship, in which he put our Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as his hero prophet. Hero prophet, he shows our Nabi, not Moses, not David, not Solomon, not Jesus, but Muhammad was his hero prophet, Thomas Khalil, in 1840. He begins his lecture by saying, in the history of the world, there will not again be any man ever so great whom his fellow men will take for a God. In the history of the world, there will not again be any man ever so great that his fellow men will take for a God. And he was considered to be one of the greatest thinkers of the past century, Thomas Carlyle. He said, no more. What he was trying to say is that we have reached that intellectual development, all of us, that we are not prepared to accept another human being as God anymore. Me, me, me. Look at me. If I can fly in the air like a bird going around the hall, and I come back here again. If I can tell you what's in your pocket, and how many notes you got, and what are the numbers of those notes, but I can show you in the palm of my hand what your wife is doing at home, what she's cooking. Look, look. This is believe I'm your God. He says, this is not the man is, I think he's going off now. He's going off, you see? I said, look at me. The man who died, and let's come with me to the mortuary, and I can get the people out of the dead. Follow me. And they come out of the mortuary. They follow me. Dead people, certified dead, gone cold like rock. Will you accept me as your God? He said, Uncle, I don't know how you do it. Look, I take off my hat to you. I'm terrified of you. A man of your power. Shh, dangerous. If you wish, you know, you can, I can see you. You can obliterate me. Finish me up. But you're not my God. I'm looking at you. I can see. Your mind tells you. This guy is about 70 years old. Before 70 years, he wasn't here. And he won't be here for another 70. You know, while you're looking, you can see all that. You see, you know, I can, if not one, it's the two of us. I says, man, we can strangle him now. We can put a knife through him. You know, if he doesn't get enough water, he'll dehydrate. If he doesn't get air for two minutes, he'll die, suffocate. All that. I said, but what I'm doing, I'm flying like a bird. I walk on the water, I give life to the dead. I said, uncle, look, I don't know how you do it. But you're not my God. 